Can death be reversed? Well, that's the contention of the Easter story. That some 2,000 years ago now, after Jesus' brutal execution and his pulverized corpse being laid to rest, that God supernaturally raised Jesus from the dead. But why should you care about Jesus' resurrection? Well, the Apostle Paul contends that Easter Sunday means two things. One, that heaven has vindicated Jesus' divine and messianic claims, such that Jesus' resurrection means Christianity is true, and that through faith in Jesus, your sins can be forgiven. And two, that this miracle in the middle of history serves as the first fruits or foretaste for what will be true of all, such that Jesus' resurrection means that death has been demoted from a full stop to a comma in the sentence of reality, and that eternal life awaits for all who believe. Now let that sink in for a moment. A Paul captures the beauty of this groundbreaking thought by recasting our ritual of burying the dead as though it's planting a perishable seed in the ground that will one day burst forth imperishable, transforming our graveyards into gardens as our grief ultimately gives way to hope. But is this just a false hope? Because for many in our skeptical age, the Easter story of Jesus' resurrection, it sounds unbelievable. Skeptics claim that either miracles are impossible or that there's never enough historical evidence to believe in one. And we've tackled those claims in another video. Can you rationally believe in miracles? So what I want to do in this video is explore why historian Rodney Stark says that there is this resurrection-shaped hole in history. So let's start with the sources. For far from being some made-up story generations after Jesus, the truth is we have a wealth of early and independent sources from within a century of the Easter story. Even outside the Bible, there are non-Christian sources, Josephus, Tacitus, and Pliny the Younger, all of which mention that Christians claim that Jesus was alive, having been raised from the dead after his crucifixion. We also have the first generation of early church fathers, Clement of Rome, Polycarp, and Ignatius, at least two of which were directly taught by the apostles, and all of whom speak of the resurrection of Jesus. But by far, our best sources for the Easter story come from the apostles, with their accounts of the resurrection finding voice in New Testament books like the Four Gospels, the Book of Acts, Paul's letters, 1 Peter, Hebrews, and even Revelation. Now, you might be inclined to reject these sources as biased religious propaganda. But the truth is the Gospels, they have all the hallmarks of truthful eyewitness reportage, which along with being penned within the living memory of the Easter story, some 20 to 60 years after Jesus' ministry, that's why even critical scholars, they take these sources seriously, even if they reject any of the supernatural content. And Paul's early Christian creed, the one that he quotes in 1 Corinthians 15, that dates back even further, being placed somewhere from three months to five years after the resurrection of Jesus by skeptical scholars as the earliest window we have into what the Christians believed. So we have this wealth of meaningful sources, but what do they say? Well, the evidence drawn from these sources, it establishes a number of historical facts with a higher degree of probability. One, that Jesus died by crucifixion under the sentence of Pontius Pilate, and that his brutal scourging and the expertise of his executioners, it meant that he endured catastrophic injuries incompatible with being revived. Two, that Jesus' well-known tomb was discovered empty by a bunch of his women followers on Easter Sunday, with his corpse never reported to be found by the authorities in order to quash any resurrection claims first made in Jerusalem. Three, that Jesus' male and female disciples, along with skeptical members of his family, had encounters with him alive again after his death that convinced them that he had been raised. Four, that the church was born in the aftermath of the Easter story, as both the moral transformation of the disciples and their novel theological beliefs were inspired by Jesus' resurrection. Five, that Paul, a former persecutor of the early church, was independently converted through what he genuinely believed was an encounter with the risen Jesus. And six, that the apostles were willing to suffer for their claims, facing various levels of persecution from the Jewish community and Roman authorities, with a handful of even being martyred for their faith, and all while being conscious that, according to their Orthodox Jewish upbringing, if they were wrong about Jesus, then they would stand condemned for blasphemy at the judgment. None of them, as well as we know, ever recanted. Now, those who deny Jesus' resurrection, they tend to argue that the disciples were either deceivers who stole Jesus' body and made up the Easter story, were deluded in that one or more of them hallucinated that they saw Jesus alive, or were deceived by a wounded Jesus after he revived in the tomb, 
or by some twin brother who appeared to them with fake scars. But the moral caliber of the disciples and their willingness to suffer for their claims that mitigates against them being deceivers. And their testimony of eating with, of touching and hugging Jesus at different times and in different locations and varied individual and group settings, that mitigates against them being deluded. And when you read the medical roundup of Jesus' injuries and the fact that the skeptical family members also came to believe in him after his resurrection, this whole revived in the tomb or twin brother thesis, it just doesn't stand up under scrutiny. They weren't deceived. And oh, something remarkable happened. Now, some historians prefer to remain agnostic, claiming that history can't adjudicate on whether Jesus rose from the dead, precisely because its methods have to remain neutral on the question of miracles. But such a position seems to ignore that Jesus' resurrection, it doesn't automatically imply God's supernatural agency. Jesus could have been resurrected using advanced alien technology, an explanation that takes miracles off the table. Which means all historians need to determine, or we have to believe Jesus' disciples were capable to competently testify to in court, is whether Jesus definitely died and whether afterwards Jesus was definitely alive. That is an historical question, and the evidence in answer to that question unmistakably points towards the affirmative. Jesus did rise from the dead. As simply put, if God exists, then miracles are possible. And the reason why I'm persuaded that God raised Jesus from the dead and not some advanced alien civilization is not only because of the two dozen or so arguments for God's existence, but because of the plausibility of Jesus' divine claims as the one in whom the whole Christian story hangs together. No one has ever lived as Jesus did with such an enigmatic moral caliber. No one has ever taught as Jesus did with such profound moral genius. No one ever exhibited such power over creation as in Jesus' ministry of miracles. No one fulfilled prophecy like he did, with all of scripture conspiring to paint his portrait. And no one has ever predicted history with such clarity as Jesus, detailing the manner of his betrayal, execution, and resurrection all ahead of time to his disciples so as to vindicate his divine claims. Jesus is in a league of his own. So if ever there was a religiously significant context that would warrant belief in a supernatural miracle of God reaching his hand into history to send us a clear message, then the history of Easter is that moment. So since truth invites questioning, why not take a fresh look at the resurrection shaped hole in history for yourself? Jesus is alive. And through faith in him, you too can breathe deep of this hope of new creation, the one that dawned for the disciples on that first Easter Sunday.